In this video, we're going to look at REDCap's Alerts and Notifications feature. This feature is in many ways similar to the automated survey invitation in that you can use specific logic to send an email to a person. However, unlike the automated survey invitations, this doesn't just send links to a specific survey for a specific record. It can send a standardized email, links to a survey or to a record, links to a survey queue, or pretty much anything else that you might want to send out. The person receiving the alert or notification could be a study participant, a researcher, or someone outside of the study who needs to be notified of something. You can find alerts and notifications under Applications on the side menu. Here, the first thing you're going to want to do is add a new alert. Give your alert a name. Then, you're going to choose what's going to trigger the alert. You have three different options here. You can have the alert triggered when a record is saved on a specific form or a specific survey, when the record is saved on a specific form or survey with, with conditional logic, or when conditional logic becomes true during data import or data entry. We're going to look at the first two items first. If we want this alert to be triggered whenever the consent form is completed, then I'm going to leave it with when a record is saved on a specific form or survey. And here I'm going to choose my consent form, and I can say if it's saved with any status or if it is saved with complete status only. Then I'm going to choose when to send the alert. I can have the alert sent immediately as soon as the consent form is completed, on the next day, weekday, weekend day, or a specific day of the week at a specific time, after a lapse of time, so perhaps I want to receive this notification two weeks later, 14 days, or at a specific date and time. I'm also going to choose how often to send this alert. I can choose to send it just once, that's once per event and, or once per instance for a longitudinal or repeating instance, every time the former survey is saved, or multiple times, Send every two days after it's initially sent. In the third step, I'm going to choose who, the, who to email from. This could be from any of the emails stored on your project, and you can choose what the display name would be next to that email. And then I'm going to choose who to email to. I could choose any of the people on my project. If I have email fields validated in the project, I could choose to send to the email that had been entered in one of those fields, or I can manually enter emails. So if the email I need is not listed on either the list of project member emails or the list of participant emails, I could choose to manually send to a specific person. You're going to give your alert a subject line, and then you're going to choose what the email should say. This is a great place to use smart variables. You can use them to tell people what record this is for, to provide them with a link to the data entry form or to, the, or to a survey form for that record, or to provide them with a link to another survey or form within that record. There is a link here to show us what, how to use smart variables. So for instance, let's start with record name. I want the record name that was completed to pipe in, so I'm going to start with Whatever the record name is for this particular record that triggered the alert will automatically fill in where it says record name. And then if I want to direct the person to the data entry form for this particular form in this particular record, I can use the form URL instrument or the form link instrument to do that. Let's stick with the form URL instrument for now. And I can get the instrument name very easily in the code book. The instrument name will always be displayed at the top of the instrument section in parentheses. If I want to add attachments to my alert, I can do that. And I can also choose when the alert's going to expire. 
Now it may be I don't want the notification only when the consent is complete. I may want it when the consent is complete and when specific logic is true. So I'm going to change when a record is saved on a specific form with specific logic. So we're going to keep when consent is saved with complete status only, but we're also going to add some logic. I have a variable in my form where the participant says, yes, they consent, or no, they don't. Looking in the code book, I can see that that variable is consent underscore yn, and that it's coded one yes, zero no. So I'm going to say that this should go out when consent yn equals yes. If they save the consent form but they have not consented, I will not receive an alert. I will only receive alerts when they save the consent form and they have said yes, I consent to this project. There is also an option to ensure that the logic is still true before sending. This can be useful if there is a time delay between when the alert is going to be triggered and when you send it out. So if I'm going to have this sent out three days later, I still only want to receive this if the consent is equal to yes. If the participant has gone back in and withdrawn their consent, I no longer re want to receive this notification three days later. If I have REDCap ensure the logic is true before sending, when it is time for the scheduled invitation to be sent, REDCap will go back to the record and look to see if the logic I specified is still true. If it is, it will send the alert. If it isn't, it will cancel it. And for this one, I want them to take the URL, but I also want them to get a, the link to the survey. So when we go down, we can see I can get links to the survey URL, get the survey link, and I can also get links to the survey queue if I want to. For this one, I'm going to use the survey link. So here I'm going to use a smart variable survey link, the instrument name, and then the text that I want it to display as the clickable link. And I save. The third type of notification is based solely on logic. I want this alert to go out when specific conditional logic becomes true. For this alert, I want the survey participant to go back in and review their consent form the day before their actual visit date. So instead of basing this off of the consent question, I'm going to base it off of a date diff calculation. So I'm going to look at what the visit date is and have REDCap compare it to what today's date is. Then I'm going to say I wanted to look at that difference in days and that the visit date is in month, day, year format. And I wanted to send this notification then when there is a difference of one day between today and the visit date. And then I want it to send immediately. You have to be careful with the ensure logic is still true when you're using a date diff. If I was still sending this after a lapse of three days, and I had this ensure logic is still true checked, I would have a problem. Because it is three days later, the date difference between today and visit date would no longer be one, and therefore the logic would no longer be true and REDCap would cancel the invitation. When you're using these kinds of date diffs, it is better to either uncheck the ensure logic is still true, or to use a date diff that calculates out so that you can send immediately. If your date diff isn't strictly equal to a specific number, but is, for example, within a range or greater or less than a certain number, you have a bit more leeway with delaying the invitation than you do if it's equal to an exact number. So for this one, because I want to send it to a participant, I'm going to go down to my email field and have it sent to the email that was entered into that field. And this time, I'm going to send them a link to their survey queue as well. I can find this also in smart variables in the survey section. And like with the form link in the survey URL, I can choose to send the survey queue URL 
or the survey queue link. Now that we have our alerts built, in a real project we will want to test them exhaustively to make sure they work exactly how we want them to. You can do that by sending them to yourself, to colleagues or other team members, or to test records you create. Once an alert has been created, you can also choose to deactivate it. That will remove it from the list of alerts that you see by default, but you can choose to show deactivated alerts so that you can see the options that you have deactivated and choose to re-enable them or to permanently delete them. There is also a notification log. This is very similar to the survey log. It will let you see any notifications that are scheduled to go out in the future and any past notifications that you have sent out. This is a very good way to track who has received their notifications, what record they were for, to let you see what the notification actually said, and to track who's going to receive a notification in the future. Alerts and notifications offer a huge range of flexibility for REDCap. You can use them to let you know when a participant's birthday is coming up so you can send them a birthday note, to let yourself know when a visit's coming up so that you know you need to do a chart extract before that happens, or to send an alert to the participant to remind them that they have a visit coming up so they don't just forget. Alerts and notifications are emails, or if you're using Twilio, text messages. Because of that, you need to be mindful about what PHI and sensitive information you may be including in an alert. The email coming from REDCap is secure, but the client server receiving the email may not be. Additionally, you should be sensitive to the idea that someone else could potentially see an email or a text message that you had directed, particularly to a participant. Be careful about piping PHI into the emails, and when you send links, be, be certain they have some kind of protection on them, such as requiring a survey login or requiring a REDCap login, so that if the wrong person clicked on them, they wouldn't have immediate and easy access to your participant's PHI. Although it's necessary to be careful with them, like it is when you're working with any kind of medical information, alerts and notifications offer a huge range of flexibility and things that you can do to expand upon your project. Don't be afraid to experiment with them to see how they can supplement your project and make it work better. And if you ever have any issues with them, feel free to contact your administrator for help understanding the best ways to set them up. Thank you.